good Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in Hi, I'm Jack O'Dean, welcome back to my channel We're talking about um, the office build that one of my subscribers asked me to put some videos together or they actually asked me some questions and I thought I'd do some series of videos on this So we talked about the Dell and physical servers, why? So we're going to talk today um, is about building a PC itself to run your server environment on now <clears throat> difference let me give you difference between a, an actual Dell Compaq or whatever brand server you get they are, will support all the operating systems Windows Server 2008 2003 they'll support the latest one 2012 server as well from Microsoft uh, it also support VMware um, um, bare bones so we could call it VMware bare bones where VMware installs physically on the, the, the server um, before any operating systems is installed um, with these ones they don't, they only support Windows uh, 10 or Windows 7 um, that's it, so that's a problem here but there's a, there's a way around this we're going to talk about virtualization because this is what we're going to do on these boxes here um, we're going to make these boxes full, they're actually running Windows uh, Server instead of Windows uh, 10 itself and, it's, not, and it's, cheap, it's a cheap way of doing it hardware is cheaper, you can with 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 the De with the Dell server, amount of money spent on a Dell server, you can buy four or five of these boxes and have them a bit like redundancy. And the software for virtualization is a lot more cheaper. You can run a free version on the server side, but you can um, you can run a full version again um, on the, this side here, exactly the same. They'll work perfectly fine, especially they're designed to run in the business environment as well as for home project use as well. Now virtualization is great for operating systems because it, it fools the operating system thinking it's on hardware, stored directly on hardware, but it's not. It's actually running from VMware's operating system itself. Um, so when you decide to move the virtual service from one box to another, it's not going to try and plug and play all the new hardware inside the box. See with Dell servers, you buy a Dell server, run the operating system directly onto there. If you have an issue with the server, as long as the, the hardware has been replaced identically, then you won't have no problems with Windows. But as soon as you go into um, like a CPU upgrade or the, the chipsets changed inside the, the new server, then Windows starts trying to plug and play and it comes. It can be very messy. Trust me, 20 years of experience it, it being messy. So I tend to run virtualization. Now virtualization, why are you saying, why do we need virtualization? Well virtualization, in my experience, when customers bought really powerful servers, they're not even coming close to using 30% or, or the whole 100% of its RAM or CPU. It always runs around about 30% or less. Um, so you've got all that extra RAM you're not using, all that extra power in the box not actually using, it's just ticking over. Um, so with virtualization, you can run multiple operating systems, one physical server. So you don't need to have lots of different servers doing a job where you can have one physical server with lots of virtual environments inside doing different jobs and it's neutralizing all the power of the hardware so you actually are putting your server um, to its full capacity, as I say, a bit tongue-tied here. So <coughs> we can install uh, operating systems on there, but we have to do it in t uh, three, um, a couple of ways. A, install Windows 10 to start with first. Then we install the virtual, virtual server, which is called Workstation Pro, uh, VMware Workstation Pro. Once that's installed, we can then set up our virtual environments and then you can install all your Windows 2008 server, SQL, Microsoft Exchange, all runs perfectly on, on virtualization and it worked perfectly on these boxes here. Trust me, I've tested it because I've got one of these boxes running virtualization at the moment with Microsoft Exchange, Windows 2008 and MySQL on it. Works perfect. And I have customers in the past that also similar same, we've rebuilt these boxes because they didn't have a large budget and, be, and they've been there for quite a few years running. Not bad. With virtualization, you can move your servers really easily. Being on a physical server, you've got to back up, restore, and hopefully the other server is identical hardware to restore back to. It can be messy, time consuming. Mm -hmm. These are easy. You've got two boxes. You can just copy uh, the server from one PC over to another. Uh, or if you take the hard drives out, plug it into this one, power it up, bang, you're up and running straight away. Very easy to shift around. And you can load balance between them as well. As well. Uh, and these are great, because if you buy two of these boxes, run them side by side, keep one powered off, keep a regular backup your virtual environment, and as soon as you need to change over hardware, because say if you want to put more RAM in this, so rather than downtime, copy over, power it up, back on the network, do your maintenance to that, power it back up again, copy the file across to make sure you've got the updated one back and running again nicely. I'm not sure, we'll go through the VMware, see what it can support and can't support, because there's different 
VMware bare bones for physical servers. Uh, if you pay for the extra bits on top, you can get a lot more um, clustering going on, things like that. But for this environment, it's going to be a small business, perfect um, achievable running box. So th let's let's talk about what I've got. I, I, this one here, I got. I paid twenty pounds for this box. Comes with its comes with a seat, um, a power supply with it as well. So if you're talking about twenty quid for here, thirty pound for the motherboard. And if I wanted to get a smaller case, not so big and stuff, then you can go for one of these thermal tape cases here, which is uh, you can stack them on top of each other. So if you want to run more than one virtual environment, so this box with this motherboard installed with 16 gig of RAM and a decent CPU in it, then I could probably run about four or five servers on here with no problems at all and with spare resources for to run safely uh, without pushing it over its, over its limit and it will run successfully for years to come. Now, and then having these sort of kit, it's much more cheaper to duplicate. So we're talking about £20 for the case, about £30 on the motherboard. Make sure the motherboard supports dual network cards as standard, and make sure the motherboard will support as much RAM as possible. So these ones will do 16 gigs of RAM. If you can buy, you can pay a bit more. So if you're paying up to about £100 for motherboard, it will then support more RAM as well. So go for the biggest you can get. So if just for going for like, if you're just going to be running Windows 2000 server for farm prints, Exchange server for email and a SQL server for database, then 16 gigs of RAM and a decent CPU, maybe i5 I, I, I Intel uh, or i3 Intel will be ideal. More, more logical processor, the better. But uh, in this case, I think I'll go for an i7 because um, it's not expensive. Probably spend about a couple hundred quid on the processor. They get you an i7 with multiple cores, which is perfect. That, that would be perfect to do. Then you can duplicate this twice. So you've got one as a backup one is a current server as well, so no problems at all. So this, so I've chosen the Gigaboard, so this will support 16 gigs of RAM. I'm just waiting on the hard drive, so I would install, on this box here, I'll install two uh, um, SS, SS drives, the uh, solid state drives, because booting on here will be absolutely phenomenally quick. I'll install Windows 10, and I'll install the VMware software on top, then create my virtual environments. It's that, that simple and easy. So you're probably talking about, for a PC this sort of spec, probably talking about just under 200 pounds. Um, if you spend a bit more than that, you, you can get you can really up up on here how much RAM you can put in it, how much CPU power you can put in it as well. So you're talking about minimum about 150 pounds, okay, for a box like this. Two of those, 300 quid. Now the VMware software, which is called Workstation uh, VMware Workstation Pro. Is I think it's about £150 itself, and you've got a full license to that, and then you can create your virtual environment. It's really simple. So, what we're going to do on this video, we're going to show you, I'm going to get the rest of the parts in on this, and we can actually show you how to install Windows 10, VMware uh, Workstation Pro on top, and then I'll take you through how to create your virtual environments for your Windows, for your Exchange, and for your SQL database to run on it. It's really nice and easy, simple. And then on these boxes, they've got multiple um, USB ports on the back, so you can add external drives. Uh, I will start out with two SS drives, and here's the main boot drives to, to run the Windows on it, to run the VMware on it. And then I'll put in two great big hard drives, mirror them, or maybe do three big hard drives in these, and rate it up five, so you've got redundancy on the hard drive, and use that for where you store the virtual environments files themselves. Uh, so it's nice and easy as well. And then I'll get myself a backup drive, um, USB 3, uh, maybe a two terabyte drive to use that as a backup so I can actually um, set up the virtual, virtual um, virtualization software to do a backup regularly to the drive. So if I do have a failure on the hardware on this, I can easily quickly swap it over to the spare one I've got and have it fired up. So the downtime on this, could you could really get the downtime down to an hour where with a Dell server, you're probably looking about four hours minimum or two hours minimum. But then again, two hours response time from Dell's is normally two hours when they get to site, then whatever it takes them to fix it. So you still talk about on this side, a much faster process of doing it and a lot cheaper too. So if you've got any questions on this, please email me below. Once I've got the rest of the parts in this, we'll do another video very shortly or very soon so we can show you how we can install the virtual server Workstation Pro on this box and how easy it is to set virtual environments up. And I'll take you through the Windows installs as well. I had to install Windows Server for, for the first time, Exchange for the first time, and uh, SQL database itself. Um, straightforward, nice and easy. And we'll talk about, bit about switching and things like that a bit later. So once we've got these boxes built, we'll put it onto the switch I use here. 
which can be used in any environment, whether it's like 100, 100 users or less. Nice and easy, and they're not very expensive switches either. Decent switches you're looking, I would stick with the D-Link um, web, web ones, so you've got controllable on the ports, and you can sort of really sort of filter things out on the network traffic, uh, or you can just keep it as, as standard, and, and they're pretty good switches, robust. They will do a gigabyte network. You can mirror ports and do lots of little bits and pieces on it, um, but they're around, around about a uh, 200 pound switch. Um, if, again, in, in network environments, get the best switch you could possibly get. You know, don't spend, a cl don't spend if you first the network, don't spend thousands of pounds on a switch. Spend at least a couple hundred quid minimum on a switch. Don't go for these cheap 60 pound uh, ones, because they'll, 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 they'll do, but your network traffic becomes slow over time and stuff like that. More you use your add on it, the slower they will get as well. So we'll talk about a bit more on switches a bit more later date, more in, on, more in depth. So thanks for watching guys. So hopefully this is um, a bit of an eye opener. Um, again, happy to subscribe. Remember to comment below any questions you got. And um, then thumbs up for the video. And see you soon. Cheers.